Greetings everyone. Today we will be going over how to calibrate a universal four level transmitter using Drexelbrook's Hartwin program. Hartwin is Drexelbrook's proprietary software that is used across most of our Hart compatible products for calibration, configuration, and troubleshooting. The software is available as a free download from Drexelbrook.com and is compatible with Windows XP and above. So let's get started. We have a Universal 4 Pro transmitter currently hooked up to our computer using a hard modem. This process is going to be the same whether you are using a Universal 4 Pro or a Universal 4 Lite transmitter. The first step is to open Hardwin. The first thing you want to do is select the proper COM port. If you do not know what COM port your heart modem is on, you will need to go into your computer's device manager and find your heart modem under the port section and identify your corresponding COM port. Or you can hit search ports and have Hartwin automatically search for it. Click OK. It may take a few seconds for Hartwin to read the configuration data off of your transmitter. Once Hartwin has completed reading the configuration, it will display a configuration screen specific to your transmitter. Let's start by going over the buttons across the top. Read Transmitter reads all the pertinent data from the transmitter and displays it on the screen. Write to Transmitter sends new or edited configuration data to the transmitter. Data fields that have been edited but not sent to the transmitter are displayed in red. Real-time view will show the real-time output of your transmitter. Point calibration can be used to calibrate your high and low points if your current level value is known. D to A trim. This allows for a reference meter to be connected to the transmitter for adjusting your transmitter output. For example, after calibration, you observe that the tank is empty and a handheld current meter reads 3.94 milliamps, while the real-time view on the PC shows 4 milliamps. By adjusting the D to A trim, you may digitally manipulate the current output to equal 4 milliamps. So in this case here, I would enter 3.94 milliamps and hit OK. You may also wish to adjust the high end to 20 milliamps. Configure meter. The Universal 4 can show a number of different variables, such as level, volume, capacitors, and percent. You may choose to enable or disable these options using this menu. Lastly, the strapping table. This displays the values of input to level and output to volume in a 2 to 21 point strapping table. The points can be changed to accommodate irregularly shaped vessels. Now as far as calibration goes, there are two types of calibration, point calibration and calibration using capacitance values. For point calibration, this can be used when the tank level can be moved or is known. When doing this, you will need to know the real-time level value while doing the calibration, and it requires two points to create a linear interpolation. This is done using the point calibration button. Here you will enter your known level value and then designate whether this point will be your high or your low point on your linear line. For example, if I enter 19.5 feet and make this my high point, it will write to the transmitter that 19.5 feet is my high point. Now the next point needs to be lower, hence my low point. This doesn't need to be done right away. The next time the level drops to a known value, I can repeat this process for the low point. The next option is calibration using capacitance values. This is used when you know the capacitance values in relation to your level values. For example, 16 feet equals 4800 picofarads. Just like the point calibration, you will need to know two points to create a linear output. The points do not have to be the lowest or the highest points in your measurement. To do this, you will need to know the following. 
the value of your lower level, the lower capacitance value, the upper level value, and the upper capacitance value. You also need to know the maximum level your tank will see, and also your 4 and 20 milliamp control points. So for this example, I'm going to enter 3 feet as my lower level value, which will correspond to 900 picofarads. My upper value for level will be 19.5 feet, and the capacitance corresponding to 19.5 feet will be 4,800 picofarads. Notice how these blocks turn red. This indicates that I've entered in values, but they have not been written to the transmitter. For my maximum level, I will write in a max value of 20 feet. Now for my control points, I will make my 4 milliamp point 1 foot and my 20 milliamp point 19.5 feet. Once I've entered in the configuration that I would like, I will hit write to transmitter. Confirm by hitting yes. And now it will write that data to your transmitter. Once this is complete, you'll see all the blocks turn white. And calibration is done. Next, if you'd like to do a volumetric output, you will go into your strapping table. I'm going to enter in two points for a linear strapping table. And in my two points, I will say that one foot of level is equal to 60 gallons of volume. And my second point will be 19.5 feet of level, which will equate to 1170 gallons of volume. Once I have the two points that I require, I can write this strapping table to the transmitter. And I'm done. We can exit our strapping table and go back to the main menu and calibration is complete. It's that simple. A few other features of Heartwind. You have the option to print the real-time data as well as options for printing your strapping table. Another neat feature is being able to save your Heartwind configuration data to a file And what this will allow you to do is if you have multiple transmitters with the same configuration, you have the option of loading this file by going to File, Open, clicking that same file, and then writing that, send that data to another transmitter. And that's all there is to do it. Thanks for watching.